Oh my god, guys. Tegan Knox has finally made her return to NXT after being gone for nearly a, almost a year, I believe, from a um, torn ACL or something along those lines. Of Achilles, she, she definitely, her injury was definitely very severe. And of course, in KFA, they had Candace as the reason that she was out so it was only fitting for her to make a return during the nxt women's tag match between championship tag match between candace and andy hartwell defending the belts against io shirai and zoe starks what a way for her to come back it was already rumored and it was already mentioned in some capacity that the, the battery that they were showing was an indication that Zoe, that um was an indication that she was coming back. But I was still surprised because, like I said, we have not seen her in quite some time. And hopefully this time around she can be here for a much longer period as this is not the first time she had unfortunately suffered an injury that took her out of action for a long period. So this is, that you know, this was... The second time in quite a while last year when that happened. And it's crazy because I think one of her last major matches is when she faced Io Shirai for the NXT Women's Championship. I want to say at night two, the Great American Bass last year, if I'm not mistaken. So what a way for her to come back this year at a Great American Bash, which this time around, they didn't do a night one, night two. They just simply did one night. They didn't do like last year when they were competing with AEW and did two nights. This time they just simply did one. And next week there will not be a Great American Bash. So what a way for her to come back and set her sights on Candice LeRae. Candice LeRae once again loses in the match that involves Io Shirai when it looked like they were just about to pick up the victory and retain the belts. And, out, and then the lights go out. They showed a little battery sign. And out comes, and out comes Tegan Knox. And what a way for her to come back, guys. And a really stacked show with three title matches back to back to back. NXT didn't waste any time tonight of going straight to the title matches before going to the last two matches of the show. You know, this match right here was really good. Really a good match between both teams. You know, EO looked really good here. Zoe Starks looked really good. What a way for her to get her first championship gold in NXT with, by winning it with EO Shirai, who she's been teaming with for quite some time. She's had some quite a few tag, uh, tag team matches with and actually faced her, her, in, her ver in her second match in NXT since she's burst on the scene. And Candice Ray, you know, she's been in NXT for a long time, so for her to finally have some gold around her waist was definitely a big deal. But now it's going to be even more interesting to see her feud with Tegan Knox, a girl who at one point she considered to be her sister, a girl who Tegan, you know, Tegan actually tried to synthesize with Candice before she got injured. You know, she tried to really get on Candace good so they were trying to she was trying to um you know see if they were still cool and that didn't turn out too well because I remember she actually ended up going to the Gargano's house and it didn't turn out the way she expected it to so definitely there's a lot of history here that I'm looking forward to as last year we seen her feuding with Dakota Kai after Dakota Kai turned on her at war games back in 2019 so it's going to be interesting to see her now feud with Candice Ray. Like I said, in a really, really stacked up show, this was one title change. Two titles did not change hands. You kick it off. We had kicked it off with MSK versus Champa and Timothy Foucher. And in many ways, I thought, you know, there was many times this match where I thought Champa and Tommaso Champ with I thought Champa and Timothy Foucher were going to actually win the belts. Uh, but that did not happen. It was a lot of, a lot of uh, occasions in this match where it looked like they were going to win the belts. But ultimately, MSK Wesley uh, managed to get the roll up on uh, Tim D. Thatcher. 
for them to win, retain their NXT tag team belts. And you could tell the crowd was definitely split in all of these matches because in this match, you know, the crowd was half was chanting for Champa and Timothy Fowler. Before the match even started, they said Champa's going to kill you. So half the fans were chanting for them. And then the other half was chanting for MSK. So you can see how split that was, especially with the promo MSK cut last week. You can kind of see why it was kind of split. And like I said, in a lot of ways, it looked as though they were going to lose the belts, but they managed to pull off the victory and retain the belts. And with Cameron Grimes and with Cameron Grimes and LA Knight, it wasn't even close as far as a split crowd. Everybody was on Cameron Grimes on camera were mostly on camera ground side however you know he it was not seen that la knight grabbed his championship hit a ddt on camera grounds with the championship which almost caused camera to be counted out as soon as he came in he hit his finisher and retained and retained the million dollars championship so you could definitely say that this feud is far from over um and he's going to continue the legacy of that belt for himself rather than for the million dollar man which is what Cameron Brown wants to do so you got that going on and of course you like I said you had the women's NXT Women's Championship match that occurred so this was definitely a stacked car you saw the return of Tegan Knox so with that happening you saw a performance by Hit Row celebrating Swer uh, Isaiah Swerve winning the North American Championship last week against Bronson Reed so that was a pretty good sight in my opinion watching that and then you end it off with Adam Cole facing Kyle O'Reilly match two which you know this this was exactly everything you expected to be a lot of super kicks a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, submission holes you know Kyle really stayed constantly um trying to work on you know work on different submissions on on adam he tried to avoid panama sunrise actually first time he got hit with it outside the ring he avoided it once and his leg gave out then adam cole hit it with him hit the then he you know he finally he finally took him out and ret and i ended up winning the match setting the score one to one now between these two so you definitely know that this feud is not over yet now that they got one win apiece there's definitely going to be a rubber match i don't see this feud being over just yet but this was definitely a really you know obviously these guys go way back to their roh days so this was exactly what you expected it to be um you know completely back and forth just uh just the way you would like i said just the way you would expect it to be you know completely back and forth throughout it was a really um you know a really good match between them and it's funny because you know you also had that excitement with johnny gargano and carrying cross which i thought was funny because he actually Kind of threw some shade on Karrion Cross there. So you're going to see a championship match between them two with Samoa Joe as a special guest referee next week. So definitely it was a stacked show for sure. But I really mainly just want to come on here and talk about the long awaited return of Tegan Nas, who's been gone for quite some time. That was a you know a really nice way to see her come back. So that's really what I want to come on here for. So that's pretty much it, guys. Sign off, Ray Bass and Flex. Like, comment, subscribe, and see you guys on the next one. One thing I should mention is that because Cameron Grounds lost that match, now he's going to have to be the Butler LA Knights. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Anyway, like I said before, sign off, Ray Bass and Flex. Like, comment, subscribe.